Hey everyone, and welcome back to my Making a Game in the Desmos Graphing Calculator series. Last time we covered collision detection and basic physics implementation. In this video, we'll build on that by talking about data storage and using it to make a defeat screen. Data storage is integral to the function of any game. The ability to store even a single bit of data, a 1 or a 0, at a time will be critical for a plethora of game mechanics. Think, do I or do I not have a key? Have I or have I not reached the end of the level? Is the enemy dead or alive? These questions I just described can be answered with booleans. A boolean is a single bit, a true or a false, a yes or a no, or a 1 or a 0. This is the most simple form of data storage, but don't get me wrong, it's probably going to be one of the most useful. For a lot of situations, you only need to know whether something is true or not. I'll start by explaining my plan to create booleans in Paint before implementing it in Desmos. My idea is that we can make a slider, b, and set it equal to 0. This just means the initial state of b is 0. The minimum value will be the slider variable b, the same b, and the maximum I'll make equal to the new variable m. M will be a variable that is dependent on two factors. The first factor will be the condition we want to make the boolean true, and the second will be b again. I'll make the conditions very simple for now. If a new variable x is equal to 10, then m will equal 1. Otherwise, m will equal b. How can we make m dependent on two factors, though? Fortunately, in Desmos, there are piecewise functions, which we can use as if statements. Here I rewrote m as a proper piecewise function. To find the value of m, we will start by looking at the first condition. If x equals 10, m is equal to 1. Otherwise, m is equal to b. If you don't know what piecewise functions are, that's fine. You just need to know that this is the notation of them, and that they'll function for us as if statements. Alright, so now that we have all our variables, let's show how to store a bit of data. To start, b will be 0. Since b is the value of our boolean, we are currently storing a 0. x, I'll say for now, is equal to 1. Now we could solve for what m is. Our rules say that if x is equal to 10, then m will equal 1. Well, here I just said that x equaled 1, so this isn't true. That means m goes to condition 2, where it sets its value to b. Okay, looking back at slider b here, it's a slider that's trying to move, but it's unable to. If you see here, the minimum value is b, and the maximum value we just solved to be b. This makes the slider completely stop, since the maximum and minimum values are the same. I'll show this in Desmos real quick with slider g. I made the maximum and minimum values equal to 2, and you see when I try running the slider, nothing happens. In fact, the bar at the bottom that you can normally drag is completely grayed out and unresponsive. Now if I set the maximum value equal to some variable, k, which is equal to 2, you see the same situation occurs. By the way, the variable names I choose here don't particularly mean anything, I choose ones that are unique and sound different from each other. Back to Desmos here, you'll see that if I keep slider g running and increase k, you see that slider g immediately begins to move. This is because I created a bound for the slider to move between, so it could finally take off. Okay, let's go back to our slider b. As we just described, slider b is trying but unable to move, since the maximum and minimum values are the same. So as long as m doesn't change, much like our example with k, slider b will stay stuck at 0 forever. If we were to make m's first condition true, however, by making x equal to 10, the slider would begin to move forward. As I discussed in the first video, it takes a slider 4 seconds at one time speed, normal speed, to complete its cycle. The slider will act a little different though. As it starts to increase, its minimum bound also increases. This means that the slider is decelerating the closer it gets to 1. In fact, this makes the slider unable to ever finish, and will only get closer and closer to 1, but it won't ever get there. Since we need our boolean b to be either a 1 or a 0, this might seem like an issue that 1 is unobtainable. Fortunately, we can just say that any value of b above 0 is true, since for b to ever be higher than 0, m's condition 1 must have been fulfilled at some point. Now let's say that at some point, x returns to equaling 1. Well, m will return to be equal to 0, since condition 1 has failed, so the slider returns to being stuck, since the minimum and maximum values are once again the same. This means we could see if condition 1 was ever met by seeing if b is above 0. This storage isn't quite ready for a test yet, though. It's missing the ability to reset or return back to 0. What we can add for now is another condition to m that says if some new reset variable, r, is equal to 0, then set m equal to 0. This will make b equal to 0, since b isn't allowed to be higher than the maximum, which relocks the slider at 0, effectively resetting the boolean. Alright, I think that's everything we'll need. Let's try plugging it into Desmos. Okay, let's set up slider b here. Huh. That's going to be a big issue. In Desmos, you aren't allowed to have variables defined in terms of each other. For instance, here I have f equals s and s equals f. You see here that we get an error that says the variables can't be defined in terms of each other. There's another error similar to this where you can't define a number in terms of itself. What we're doing here is an extension of this because we're defining a slider in terms of itself by saying the minimum b at the maximum b values are b itself. The slider couldn't possibly know what b is since there are infinitely many solutions to b, so it throws an error because of an undefined value. This is a problem. 
Fortunately, we can use a tool from statistics called residuals. I won't get too into it, but essentially residuals are used to determine the difference between an empirical value and a theoretical value. We aren't going to be quite using them for that, though. If we type b tilde 0, Desmos will give us a residual, in this case e1, to use. Don't mind that RMSE number. We won't be using it at all. What that b tilde 0 means is b is our empirical value and 0 is our theoretical value. As I said before, we could find what our residual e1 is by finding the difference between these two numbers, which you can see here is always just going to be b. Now you'd think that residual e1 here would be exactly the same as b, and in value it is, but it's technically a different variable. This allows us to sub it into the minimum and maximum slider equations without getting any errors. You might ask why I didn't just create a new variable and set it equal to b, and use that in the minimum maximum slider equations. And the reason is that the residual technically isn't ever defined in terms of b. It's measuring a distance between b and 0 and becoming that value. It just so happens that the distance is always equal to b. If I were to make a new variable and set it equal to b, it would be defined in terms of b, thus making the slider defined in terms of itself once again, breaking it. Alright, so we finally have a working slider system. I'll type that in over this narration. Note that the minimum value for b was changed to residual e1, and an m, condition 3, was also changed to e1. Well, let's give it a go. I'll begin by starting slider b. Now I'll set r to 1 in order to stop resetting b. I'll set x equal to 10, and you see that b is now set. If I make x equal to something else, you'll see that b is still set. Now I'll reset b by using the r slider, and it's ready for another set. This time I'm going to make x equal to 10 for a very short time, and you see that b still gets set. This is great news. Now we can use this to capture a single bit of data. All right, now I'm going to go back to what we've done so far in the game and insert our storage equations to create a death screen. I'm changing b to b1 here since we're going to have more than one boolean in the future. Same with m here. It'll become m1. Okay, the last thing we need to change is our condition 2 here, or x equals 10, yielding 1. Instead, I'll sub in d as less than or equal to 0, since that is the equation we developed last time to detect collision. Alright, now I'll hit play and let the circles collide. And there you go, as soon as they touched, b1 stored a 1. Now we'll hook up our defeat screen to toggle based on b1 here and try it again. Yep, it flashed red during the intersection, but will it continue after the intersection? Looks like. This is great news and good progress in developing the basics of our game. I think this video has become confusing enough so far, so it's probably best I end it here. Thanks for watching, make sure to tune in next time for improving the time variable and adding some new enemies. It'll be a less technical and more fun creative video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask below. Until next time!